James here from goodguitarist.com and today I want to show you a basic 12 bar blues and we're going to answer some basic questions like what is a 12 bar blues? You know what we mean by the one, four and five chords, how a blues jam might go down, how to add some cool riffs and rhythms to your blues and I'll also teach you an easy turnaround riff that you can play. So first, what is a 12 bar blues? Well, before we answer that question, we need to ask an even simpler question. What's a bar? And that's really simple. We count music in bars or measures. You know, that's two words for the same thing. We count one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. You know, we count like that until we get up to 12. So we're counting to four 12 times. That makes 12 measures. And then we use some bluesy chords and we repeat those 12 measures of bluesy chords over and over again. And that's our 12 bar blues. And while the 12 bar blues is one of the most essential building blocks of rock and roll, more importantly, it's the ultimate medium for jamming, you know, because everybody knows how to play the blues no matter what jam session you go to. You know, somebody plays or sings the melody, you know, my dog got sick, so I took him to the vet or whatever. And then everybody takes solos. And then even though you're having too much fun, you try to end it with a cool lick or a turnaround or something like that. You know, so to summarize, the form or shape of the song is 12 bars of bluesy chords. And now for those actual chords that we play during those 12 bars, this brings us to our next point. The blues is made up of three chords called the one, four, and five chords. Four and five. So you start out by choosing a key. We're going to do this in the key of A, and that makes A the one chord. So the key equals the one chord. The four chord, it gets a little bit complicated, but basically our key has seven notes in it. A is one, then we count up A, B, C, D. D is the fourth note, and that's the four chord. So our four chord is D. And then the five chord, it's the same deal. A, B, C, D, E. E is the fifth note in the key of A. E is the five chord. You know, there's a bit more to it with sharps and flats and all this stuff, but basically you just count up the scale and you get the one, four, and five. In our case, A, D, and E. And we could play each of those just as plain major chords. A major, D major, E major. <laughs> If we make those into seventh chords, we can get them to sound a lot bluesier. You could do without, but really that's like making a cake without icing. So for A7, we're gonna put our middle finger on the second fret of the D string, and then we're gonna put our ring finger on the second fret of the B string. So just those two strings and we can mute the thickest string lightly by touching it with our thumb or we can just leave it and that's our A7 chord. Then for D7 we take this exact thing that we're playing and we move it over towards the thinner strings just one time and then we put our index finger on the first fret of the B string. So that gives us a D7 and for this one it's pretty important that you lightly touch the thickest string and mute it. So for A7, we just move that over and we get our D7. And now for E7, we're going to be coming from A7. We basically just make an E major chord, you know, a plain old E major chord. And we can either remove our ring finger, that's one variation of E7, or back to our regular E chord, we can add our pinky to the third fret of the B string. And that's another way to play E7. So A7, D7, and then E7. So we have our 12 bars, we have our bluesy chords, and now we gotta figure out how to fit the chords into those 12 bars. 
And there are a ton of different variations. We're going to go with the simplest, most standard version of a 12 bar blues, like you'd find in Crossroads by Cream or, you know, a billion other blues songs. And we'll get there. But first, we got to learn the basics and how to keep track of where we are within the blues. So here's the first exercise that I want you to practice. We're going to start on our A7 chord and we're going to strum the chord going one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we're just strumming the chord on beat one and counting out the remaining beats. And we're going to do that with all the chords from the blues. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. Three, two, three, four. Four, four, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now that is the most essential thing, to learn to keep track of where you are within the 12 bar blues by counting it out, you know, using this chart here, which is available on my Patreon page, along with step-by-step -step instructions for this entire lesson, or you can just practice it right here. Anyways, we do that, we play through the chords, just counting out loud, and now you could add some rhythm at this point, you know, just using your favorite strumming pattern, And for that stuff, listening to the blues and even muting your strings and just playing some rhythm along to some recordings, that's an amazing exercise. And with just that, you know, those chords, knowing the 12 bar blues and a little bit of strumming, you could jam the blues, you know, just play some chords. Maybe you have a friend who can take a solo, but if you want to spice it up, the next thing that I want to show you is that blues boogie riff. So instead of playing A7, we can replace it with this riff. We start by putting our index down on the second fret of the D string. And we're going to make a tiny little strum aiming just for the, a, the open A string and the D string. If you get the lowest string, it's not a huge deal, but you know, try your best to just do a tiny little strum that gets both those strings and you're going to strum it with two down strokes. And then you're going to put your ring finger two frets higher. So it's going to be on the fourth fret of the D string. And then you strum that two times. And this can be tough, you know, reaching for that note. It's important to pay attention to your thumb placement. You want it behind the third fret because that way it's the halfway point between your index and your ring finger, and it can kind of support them both equally. If you can't reach with your ring, some people use their pinky. You know, I think it's fine either way, but if you can, it's worth practicing hard and, you know, getting that ring finger to work out because it's one of your dominant fingers. You know, it, it won't happen overnight, but if you keep at it, you can definitely start to build up that strength, reach, and dexterity. Anyways, once you have that down, you go back and forth, counting along, you want to do four beats to make it a bar. And you count every time you move a finger. So we start with our index finger down and we count one and we're doing two strums as we count one. Then we switch to our ring finger on beat two and we do two strums. Three, four. One, two, three, four. And that makes up a whole measure. So we started with four measures of A or four bars of A, and we're going to count four times to the number four to get the right amount of riff. Three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. Three, two, three, four. Four, two, three, four. And at this point, we've played 
four measures of A, just like our 12 bar blues starts out, and we can go to D. For D, we're going to do the exact same concept, basing a simple riff off of that D chord. And it's really easy from here. We just take what we were playing and we move it all up one string. So now my index finger and my ring finger are on the G string, same fret, second and fourth fret, and I'm aiming for the D and G string when I pluck. And you do the exact same thing. We count out two measures like that, because we had two measures of D in our 12 bar blues. One, two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. And then we go back to A for two measures. And now we come up to the E chord. And for E, we're holding the A string at the second and fourth fret, and we're aiming for the bottom two strings as we pluck. And we just do that once. One, two, three, four. Then we go to D. One, two, three, four. And we finish with two measures of A. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So I'm just going to show you that whole thing going through the entire blues form. A one, two, three, four. That's it, you know, the same riff in three places. We just move it around and follow the chords of the song. Now, at this point, we're totally ready to play some basic blues, but there's a couple more things that I want to discuss. First, now that we know what we're playing, let's review that one, four, five. One is A, four is D, and five is E. And a good exercise to help get that to sink in is to play through the blues over and over. And the first time you go through, you know, when you go through the 12 measures, say the names of the chords. And then the second time you go through, say the numbers. And you alternate between that. So first, A, 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 D, D. One, one chord, one chord, a one chord, four, four, one, one, five, four, one, a one. The second thing I want to talk about is the ending or the turnaround. And the turnaround is an essential part of the blues. And once you hit a certain point, you'll have a whole bunch of these to use throughout your blues jam. You know, it happens near the end of the 12 bars and it would go something like this. So it's basically a riff that sounds really, really bluesy, and you use it near the end of the 12 bars to turn around to the beginning. And here's a nice simple one that I'd like to share with you. So it happens at the very end of our blues. We have our E chord, then our D chord, and here when we land on A, we're going to strum it once, and then I like to take this shape. Here's a really easy turnaround. We slide it up to the fifth fret. And then we go down, up, go to the fourth fret, down, up, third fret, down, up, and then back to our A7. And then we go on the thickest string, the third fret, we lightly bend it with our middle finger, and then kind of like our riff, but we're just playing one hit of it. 
do that one more time, nice and slow. One and two and three and four and one and two and yeah. Back into the blues. And if that's too much, you can do it in an even simpler way. We're just going to play the fifth fret of the D string and we're going to strum the A string and D string. We're just going to go. So it's the same thing except we're excluding the higher note. You know, we're just strumming those two strings and we start one and two and three and four and one and two and, you know, and for that one, we could just play three O on the thickest string. We could do it in the simplest way. I'll do that one more time, nice and slow. Three and four and one and two and three and four and one. back into our blues. So to sum this all up, I'm going to play through the blues with my metronome to help me keep a steady pace. I'm going to strum it in a really simple way. Then I'm going to do that boogie woogie riff rock and rhythm. And you know, we'll see if we go anywhere else with it. Alright, so that's the 12 bar blues. And if you need some help, there's that worksheet on my Patreon page that takes you through this entire lesson, has everything written down. I'm also making a blues course right now. You can find more details on that down below and you can sign up, you know, depending on when you're watching this, it might already be out. So please take a look. Otherwise, have a fun time practicing and I'll see you soon.